welcome to my channel. For those of you that are new, my name is Brianne Beebe and I teach high school math. This is now my seventh year. For today's video, we're talking about classroom management, which can be kind of a loaded topic. There's a lot, a lot to consider. And this was a viewer request, so I just wanted to basically share what I do slash my perspective. But keep in mind, this is what I do for my students at my school, and what you do is probably going to be different. Another thing that I think I should mention is that I work in a really small school. There's about 100 students per grade in grades 7 through 12. By the time students get to their senior year, I know like 90% of the class, so that actually helps a lot. But the thing is, I teach primarily 10th through 12th graders, so I don't get to know the students in 7th, 8th, and 9th grade until they're older. So as far as managing behaviors in the hallways, it's kind of hard just because if you don't know the students, they're more likely to blow you off because they don't know who you are. So plain and simple, I rely on routines, procedures, and expectations. I go over all of this with students at the beginning of the year and reteach as necessary throughout the year. It's always a good idea to go over those things again every time you start a new quarter because students tend to forget or get lazy as the year progresses. Having your routines, procedures, and expectations in place from the beginning helps students know what behaviors you're looking for and it helps prevent a lot of acting out. As far as redirecting students for behavior, I play to my strengths. I'm quick-witted and I have a very expressive face, so I use those things to my advantage. If students are acting out, I can kind of quick make it into a joke or just make a weird face at them like, because that communicates to them, what are you doing? You shouldn't be doing that, stop it, without making it like a threatening thing. It's actually really annoying. Anytime I verbally redirect a kid and say, hey, stop doing whatever, I always get an argument back like, oh, I'm not. Oh, I was just doing this. Like they want to explain themselves. I don't need their explanation. I just need them to stop. So usually giving them a look is more effective. And if they're not looking at me, I will stare at them making some kind of weird face until they look at me and usually all their friends are like starting to tap them on the shoulder like, cut it out, man. So that works for me, but I don't know that it would work for everyone else. Generally speaking, I have good relationships with students or at the very least a good rapport and I develop that by staying focused on respect. The way people were raised as I was growing up was that you would always give adults respect regardless of anything that's going on. Kids are not being raised the same way or at least that's not a value that they seem to have. They look at respect as a two-way street which makes sense but they feel like they should be respected first or at least that's what I've been getting from students that I've been working with and as long as they're respecting me, I don't care if I had to respect them first. You know what I mean? It's kind of weird how people almost like argue over this point that the kids should just respect them because they're the adult in the room. The more adult thing is just to respect everyone, regardless. So anyway, whenever I'm communicating with a student like one-on-one, -on -one, whether I'm standing right there with them or having to direct them, you know, like raise my voice so that they can hear me, I like to do so respectfully. So a common example is students are not to wear their hoods in school, so I'll say, please take off your hood. And I get the best results that way. So essentially, I feel like students are being spoken to in a way that they want to be spoken to, so they're more likely to respond with your request. But also, I'm not assuming that they're breaking a rule on purpose. A lot of times, kids are just comfortable wearing their hoods. They wear their hoods all the time outside, at home, so when they come to school, it's like a natural thing for them to wear their hoods. and. So it kind of makes sense that it's on and they don't even realize it. Now anytime that it's a student that I know, I like to start out with some kind of a greeting. Essentially what I notice is teachers will redirect kids that walk up to them and say, I need a pencil or I need something because they just come up to them and don't even say hi to them and just start saying, I need this, I want this, blah, blah, blah. So I've often seen teachers stop the student and say, oh, I think you mean, hi, Mr. or Mrs. so-and-so. I would like a pencil, please. Um, so they're trying to teach the students manners, but sometimes we completely skip that step ourselves. So it's essentially, if you want students to behave a certain way, you need to model that behavior for them. It's called leading by example. So again, back to the hoods, because this is common in my school. If I see a student that I know wearing a hood, I'll say, good morning. 
you student's name. And when they say good morning back, I say, can you please take off your hood? And that, that's it. But that's essentially just what works for me. I get good results most of the time. When I don't get good results, it's actually really funny because I'm speaking to students nicely and kindly that when they don't acquiesce with my request, their friends actually start saying, come on, man, just do what she says. She asked you nicely. So that's worked out for me very well. That's not to say that students don't go on doing what they want to do, not listening to me. It's just that usually we don't have to go further in steps. The students in my classroom sometimes, I'll have to like reason with them or I'll have to say, okay, now I've asked you nicely twice. The third time is not gonna be as nice. And that's usually when they're like, okay, okay. So in general, my students kind of view me as being like a chill or relaxed teacher, but I set that expectation from the beginning of the year that as long as you're doing what you're supposed to be, I am pretty chill. If you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing, I stop being chill because we have stuff to do and I need you to go along with what we're doing. So those are my current thoughts on classroom management. Um, this video was a viewer request and if you have any other requests for future videos, please leave them in the comments below and as always, thanks for watching.